I thought this article here was really interesting from the New York Times. Um, a really cool um, op-ed written by a lady called Gabriella Hamilton, who is the co-founder, operator, owner of this restaurant called Prune. And it's really illuminating because it's essentially detailing her. It's titled, my restaurant was my life for 20 years. Does the world need it anymore? The subtext is, uh, forced to shutter, prune. I've been revisiting my original uh, dreams for it and wondering if there will still be a place for it when you look at the future. And I think it's a legitimate, um, it's like a really good world piece because at first I thought it was going to be like a woe is me sort of thing because there's a lot of people in the restaurant industry who have kind of, because I've been following it from the outside in, you know, reading a few Eater articles here and there, some Grubhub stuff, some films of people on social. And there's a lot of people are really moaning, crying and bitching about this whole lockdown thing. And there's a lot of kind of entitlement, I feel, when it comes to some of the restaurateurs, which may be justified, might not be justified, I don't know. But from my point of view, I think most businesses, most areas of business have had to pivot and have had to innovate due to technology ramping up and sort of kind of um, pushing them into uh, accepting the inevitable future that's to come. But a lot of restaurateurs, a lot of bar owners have been resistant against it and sort of like holding on to the good old days in the hope that somehow life is going to go back to how it was for them when it was comfortable. And it's not, it's not how the world works, isn't it? But just the stuff changes, things have to innovate, people have different demands, um, your customer base changes especially, you know, they get aged out um, or they just move on to different things. So you have to kind of appeal to different people, especially if your place is, you know, um, if you're just going to operate your restaurant in the same location, you have to be able to attract different people. They're not going to be the same people going to be operating there or day in, day out. I'd say more so for running a bar. Bars have a tendency to lose their cachet, lose their corners factor, um, especially if you're, you rely on being called. They tend to lose that. So you have to keep reinventing yourself every four or so years. Restaurants may be a bit longer, but there has to be an acceptance of like, you know, the world is changing around you. So I think a lot of them would be really resistant or putting, you know, menus online, sometimes doing any basic social media, sometimes not willing to, you know, the, the whole, we're not willing to accept deliveries, okay, because I think it does require an internal, it does require more work than what it seems like on the surface. There is a whole kind of infrastructure that has to be built in and around it. You have to maybe construct a different menu, which should be within your purview if you're, you know, an actual operator of a restaurant, you should be able to do that with your eyes closed. But I understand the resistance against that because, you know, it's a whole thing. But the idea that you can just get away with just being like this hole in a wall that people just discover is really ridiculous considering the most of the reason why people, just, especially from my thinking or from my experience, the most of the way that I discover new places is via YouTube videos, podcasts, you know, stuff I sign online on the internet or stuff I might see on social media. Um, tagged in places and you go to their page and you discover they got really cool photography or they got some cool characters in the restaurant that they're kind of propping up as kind of faces and influence or kind of brand ambassadors for this restaurant these kind of things you're just going to have to do and I think a lot of restaurateurs are really stuck in their ways which is disappointing to see because you know of course a lot of that, even if you do innovate it's no guarantee that you're going to survive when everything will turn back to normal but we're going to lose a lot of the good places that we know and love just because you know their owners are so stubborn and so deep you know stuck in their ways and they weren't willing to accept anything different but i thought this lady made a really good point as to why she doesn't want to do it herself right um except the kind of future that's to come um it's down here let me see if i can find it it's a quote here about um the whole unwillingness to open or to do the whole delivery thing and i think it speaks to the reason why a lot of commentators like myself shouldn't speak to operators about what they all if or have any kind of opinion or advice i don't think that's a good thing to do so where is it if i can find it da, 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 da. for a long time i can't see myself excited doing it or is it oh, here it is Mm-hmm. Let's back up here. Can I finish? Let me see if I can find it. Get back to the screen. One second, bear with me. Uh I don't know who to follow. That's it. Let me find it here. I don't. Yeah, there you go. It's found it. So this quote here says the following. I don't know whom to follow or what to think. Um Everyone everyone says you should do to go. You should sell gift cards. You should offer delivery. You need a social media presence. You should pivot to groceries. You should raise your prices. A Branzino is $56 at Via Carto. Um, I have thought for many 
long minutes, days, weeks of confinement and quarantine? Should I? Is that what prune should do? What prune should become? I cannot see myself excitedly daydreaming about the third party delivery ticket screens I will read all this from all evening. I cannot see myself sketching doodles or the to go boxes while I pack my food into them so I can send them out into the, into the night, anonymously hoping the poor delivery guy does a great job and stays safe. I don't think I can sit around daydreaming up menus and cocktails and fantasizing about what they would be on my playlist just to create something that people will order, receive and consume via an app. I started my restaurant as a place for people to talk to one another and with a very decent but affordable glass of wine and an exper expertly prepared plate of simple braised lamb shoulder on the table to keep the conversation flowing and it ran as long as it should and it, and it ran as long and it ran it and ran it as I ran it as such as long as I could if this kind of place is not relevant in society then it we then it we should become extinct which I thought was a very um honest and refreshing take on it like you know the idea that maybe this is a form of natural selection which you know of course it's a bit glib to say but there must be some acceptance of some businesses that you know you can't just rely on things remaining the same for your business to exist that is a bit weird and also a little bit foolhardy for a little bit short-sighted and you also open yourself up to you know the competition coming alongside just sweeping you either way which might be a good thing and i think you know most businesses people say they're babies so it's hard to kind of you know quote unquote put your baby down and move on to something else but the idea that because i like i think she's obviously an experienced restaurateur so she's well aware of the idea that there's a lot that's going to go into it pivoted the brand to something else and maybe that's not a restaurant she wants to open some people you know, i never knew this restaurant even existed so she might like that the idea that you just discover it by word of mouth people kind of recommend it to you you might be passing by and you might find it or you might have heard people talking about it someplace that you go or you might kind of hear it mentioned in a video somewhere but the fact that she is doing it the way that she's doing it so successfully over these 20 years is proof that it works and people like the way it's done but if it means that now post covid she has to pivot into something else it's not the same thing anymore and i think that's perfectly fine because the last thing you want is for businesses to still have be around holding on for dear life and then for the owners to be bitter to be resentful and to not be enjoying what they're doing because that's definitely going to be reflected in the service definitely going to be reflected in the atmosphere in the food you get served on your plate everything's going to be really affected by that kind of um lack of uh, willingness and warmth or the or just the the lack of love that they have in any given moment and i think sometimes the honorable thing to do in those occasions maybe to just hang up the, the shutters um i think in this piece she mentioned she's going to see how long she can last with the money that they have available in the covers and if they can last until things reopen then so be if not it is what it is but of course a very refreshing um take on everything that's been happening and again she wasn't being well as me i think she mentions in the article here that she didn't want to accept any um donations from a gofundme or those kind of things which was again super admirable considering the amount of people are they grifting and begging and pleading with customers to kind of get the money to survive but again it would be cool to see government stepping in and offering some relief to these places that are you know it's it's kind of unfair that they don't get any kind of protection from their you know uh from their local government especially especially when they're contributing so much to their overall gdp um i'm sure with that restaurant out of that street they're going to see a decrease the amount of money that they make you know even due, even via like parking fines and shit so it's always i always find that bizarrely short-sighted bizarrely short-sighted from some cities or some states where they don't necessarily embrace new they don't give any of these businesses that are actually bringing foot traffic into said location any kind of benefit any kind of government funding or support or whatever it may be um they somehow have this weird assumption or belief that if they just get rid of them and put someone else in their place it'll be okay and it's not necessarily the case sometimes people come to a particular street just because of the street but sometimes they come to that street because of the people that are there who are tied to our neighborhood who have ties to the community um who are just ingrained in anything that's good about it and then when you kind of rip it to pieces it just doesn't make any sense it's like it kind of reminds me of the whole jerry Krause thing in the jordan documentary he does everything he can to piss off Jordan and piss off Phil Jackson by telling him it's their last season before the season kicks off. And it's like, why would you ruin a good thing? Why not just let it run its course as it may be and then replace? Why do you have to kind of come out and be, yeah, so 
I don't know, but definitely check it out. Um, it's called My Restaurant Was My Life for 20 Years. Does the world need it anymore? Written by this lady called Gabrielle Hamilton. Again, I'll link in the show if you guys to check out yourself. But it's a really cool New York Times magazine piece that I thought was very interesting. <laughs>